me start by um, thanking my team, who's just been incredible during this whole thing, of course, all working from home and, and furloughed, so working very much part-time. Uh, on the, the call here today is uh, Olivia perez Odess. She is our membership services director. We have Vince Minetti, who is doing our marketing work these days, and, and Peter may or may not join us. We're actually trying to get the newsletter out as we speak um, before another meeting um, at noon. So uh, he'll join us if he's able to do that. What we're trying to do through these sessions is, is a couple of things. One is just to stay connected um, as we are our friends and colleagues. And this is a, another way for us to do that. And, and the other is um, to share information, both uh, from the municipal level, but then also going around the Zoom room here, who's doing what, um, relatively brief updates as we, uh, we can have uh, several people giving updates. And we're going to try to do this in about an hour as possible. We're not going anywhere, so it can go longer than that. But uh, as people uh, need to get off, please uh, jump off as, as you need to and, um, and let the conversation continue. So ground rules. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, start with our municipal leaders and uh, hear from them. And then we're going to open it up and uh, hear from anybody else who would like to contribute and give an update on, um, on your business. Um, my video tends to be unstable. <laughs> so hopefully I'm not gonna lose the connection, but my video is gonna go off and on. And so I'll still be with you uh, on audio. Uh, just a few quick updates from us. Uh, the, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program continues to be very popular. A lot of our members uh, have applied and a lot of our members have received funds. And so that's terrific. Um, there are also many questions then around how you actually can use those funds and um, we're willing to work with any of you individually on those questions. And also just a reminder, um, we've been doing webinars, um, multiple of them uh, every week. And we do that uh, in association with other professionals. And so this past week, we had a webinar on virtual networking. And um, we've been doing at least a once weekly webinar with MassPay, who's just been a terrific source of information. And uh, there's one coming up on Tuesday that's gonna cover the whole COVID front. So everything from the, the PPP and EIDL to HR um, questions and issues to unemployment um, issues. Um, you'll see in our newsletter, the link for that webinar is four o'clock on Tuesday. And we're doing that um, in collaboration with many other chambers um, around the North Shore. And um, on the last call, we had over 200 people participate in that. And so the idea is submit your questions on email and um, they will literally run down the question list. It is entirely meant to be Q&A and directing, um, answering your questions directly. And if they can't, um, they or we will follow up with you. Um, we're really here to help you through this uh, situation as best we can. Um, big news from Gloucester, and I'm gonna let you talk about this, Sal, on the small grant program. That's a, a wonderful new program, $500,000. And I know you're um, already overwhelmed with applications. That's terrific. And, um, and also on the news front is that uh, more and more we're, we're talking about reopening. And uh, as much of the country is, is already, has already done and is in the process of doing that, and we'll hear a little bit from Rafi from Florida as to what's going on down there. But uh, we're looking at doing the same thing here as the governor's uh, stay-at-home advisory ends on May 18th. We'll see if he extends that or not. But certainly if it is not extended, we wanna be ready to reopen as the golf courses, in fact, reopened yesterday. And I live in Essex. I noticed there were people golfing on Cape Ann Golf Course this morning. It was nice to see them out there, although no carts allowed. But um, it's nice to see people out on the links. So, um, so we're turning our attention to reopening, and Gloucester has formed a reopening task force. And uh, I'm on that, um, as is Sal, as is Elizabeth Carey, you know, in representing you all in all of your businesses. And we're going to provide detailed guidance as to um, as to how you can reopen your business safely in a phased approach. And Sal, as you talk a little bit more about that. Um, so I think with that, I'll I'll, I'll stop talking. And um, and Sal, why, why don't you start from uh, give us an update of what's going on in Gloucester, please? Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Tony, Peter. Um, and the whole board. Um, th this is this is great, and it's a great opportunity for me to connect with all of you. Um, as Ken mentioned, uh, we're really excited about our small business grant program. I just got an update 
um, a minute ago that we have over 100 applications that are at least in process. So we'll definitely be oversubscribed. Um, but, um, you know, happy that that program um, is, is gaining a lot of interest. And, um, you know, as we see what the needs are, you know, hopefully there can be an opportunity in the future uh, for an additional round if we could get funds uh, from somewhere. Um, but we're really happy to do this. It's really important to the mayor to help the businesses in whatever way um, we can. Um, Ken also mentioned about the PPP loan. If there's anybody that hasn't received the balance of their loan funds yet, um, if you don't mind, Ken, if they give you their contact information, I'm happy to send that to our state uh, contact with the SBA uh, because I did bring that up after the last call asking about uh, the remainder of the funds um, that uh, people were hoping to get soon. Um, so anyways, um, and as Ken also mentioned, the reopening task force met. Uh, Ken and I are on the business uh, subcommittee. And if anybody would like to participate, we have a meeting Monday at two o'clock. Um, please let Ken know. But um, basically we're covering um, manufacturing, retail, personal care, uh, Main Street businesses. There's a separate group uh, for food establishments um, since that's a very specific area and that's headed by Jim Destino. But the goal is to really gather best practices. I know Bob Gillis uh, already sent me a banking best practice real um, COVID-19 document, which is very helpful. But the goal is to assemble this information, get feedback from the businesses, uh, so we have a plan moving forward. Um, so, um, we're excited about that. That's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of hard work, but um, again, we're we're um, getting all this information together um, so that when we do get the eventual green light to open, that we have a plan moving forward. And, and also, there's businesses that have different sizes that are of different sizes that might not have the resources um, to come up with their own policies and documents. So. Um, we're really happy about that. Lori's helping us out as well. Um, so we get a good, we get a good group. So um, please let Ken know, or you could let me know uh, if you're interested. Um, so um, also there's going to be a press release soon that um, a local Gloucester company in the industrial park is set up to um, manufacture hand sanitizer. Um, they're at 11 Dory Road. Um, the company is called Gloucester Bio. Um, so this is really exciting because they have, they're uniquely situated where they can really produce mass quantities and eventually become one of the largest, if not the largest hand sanitizer manufacturer um, in Northeast uh, United States. So um, really happy about that. Um, we're continuing to help businesses one-on-one, -on -one. and as Ken mentioned, uh, golf course is open. So right away, I was on the phone with folks from Bass Rocks. Um, you know, it's it's there's very strict um, guidelines uh, that need to be followed um, to make sure it's safe. social distance. So um, glad they're open, but you know, they're committed to uh, operating in a safe way. So, um, but um, that's it. And, and uh, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Sal. I, uh, just to add a little more on this task force. So actually, um, there should be a press release next week. Is that right, Sal? Are you guys putting something together to let the community know what's going on? Yes. Yep. Great. So more to follow uh, next week in the papers. And um, with regard to our business community, um, as Sal said, there, there's actually gonna be three subcommittees that will look at all of our businesses. And the way the committees are arranged is there'll be one big subcommittee that is called business. And that's what Sal and I and Bob Gillis and, and Jill K. Hill and Applied Materials uh, are on. And then there are uh, two other business subcommittees. One is called tourism, 
and Elizabeth Curry uh, is leading that. And tourism uh, includes our arts and culture uh, organizations, attractions, and accommodations, principally. Uh, and then the third one is restaurants, as Sal mentioned, and Jim Destino is leading restaurants. And then for all of these subcommittees, we'll be reaching out and asking for input as to, uh, as to are there specific things that, that you, know, you would advise doing or want us to look for and involvement in the subcommittee if, if you'd like that as well. So you're gonna be hearing more from us um, on that. Um, but again, we had a good kickoff meeting yesterday, two hours. And, uh, and we're just starting to put the plans together now. So much more to follow on, um, on that work. And then as Gloucester puts together these reopening plans, the intent is to share that with our other three communities. And one way we'll do that is through our Government Affairs Council. And so we have a meeting next week to talk about um, how we might leverage the Gloucester work and share that with Rockport, Manchester, and Essex, who are, who are certainly um, thinking about the same kinds of things. So uh, that's it for me on that. You know, one of the things we didn't do is, is um, if you haven't already, if you want to go to your chat uh, screen and just um, sign in as to uh, name, business, and uh, and where you're where you're calling from, that would be fun. So we have that for the record, and um, and let's let's go around the room. You know what I may do is is call on a few of you who haven't uh, joined us maybe in a little bit and. And Rafi, why don't we start with you, if you'd like, uh, give us a, a short update as to what's going on from, who are you, what's your business, and what's going on in Florida? Okay, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, Rafi Kasabian, my wife and I run the uh, Defiant Sales Charter business. We've been in Gloucester running that business over 20 years. Uh, I've been a chamber member since 96. And um, we do our sales charters out of Beacon Marine. Uh, we accommodate 12 passenger or less for day sales. And uh, for overnights, we do um, four to five passengers for overnight charters. So in the winter months, we sail down in October down to Florida to the Bahamas and then back up again to be home by Memorial Day weekend for our summer uh, charter season in Gloucester. That's us, but you guys feel free to uh, check our website and contact us directly if you like to and I'll fill you in for more information. Uh, with more information. We also do numerous uh, special occasions on board, you know, weddings, uh, special uh, parties, uh, all that type of thing. And I think that um, this year, especially this year, where you, you're not allowed to have large groups uh, congregating in small areas, um, if people are within the same family or, or friends that have you know, cleared from COVID-19, uh, our vessel with, uh, you know, small group, you know, personal group, private charters will be really suitable for Gloucester, I think. But I don't know what's going on with the whale watch boats. I don't know how they're going to accommodate all those people on board and go out for, for charters. Uh, I haven't spoken to anyone there yet. We're still in Florida. We're taking our time because I know Massachusetts is really behind about opening up. Uh, Gloss, uh, Florida opened up except the Keys. The Keys are still kind of, um, I don't know why, they're, they're still, majority of it is close to the public and they're keeping it that way. And they've done that for the last five, six, five, six weeks. Um, we're in mid Florida right now, just south of Cape Canaveral, Melbourne area. And we've been here about four or five weeks and uh, restaurants opened up, uh, majority of them. And so it's up to the, it's up to the owners, you know, if they want to open and have in, in, inside seating, they're, they're accommodating close to 25%, a little bit more, depending on the size of the restaurant. And uh, Lisa and I were able to go with a friend to um, Bonefish Grill the other day. That was two days ago, actually. And they did a great job. I mean, really, I was really, really impressed. I kept a really close eye on, on sanitation and what they did and all the waiters and waitresses and they had overstaffed which was really great they open the door for you when you come in so you're not touching anything we didn't have masks on because obviously we're going to dine so you can't have a mask when you're dining uh, but all the staff had masks on and gloves and um and after clearing each table they were you know changing gloves i mean they really really sanitized and uh they're fogging every night i mean they're really going out of their way to keep the place clean 
and sanitize as well as outside seating. But then they kept uh, tables, you know, within, a, 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 I say beyond six feet and the bar section was closed. They took all the bar stools off so nobody could sit there. Um, other than that, I mean, uh, most of the uh, places are beginning to open. Uh, the beaches are opening. Uh, they've been open for exercise, fishing and that kind of stuff, but not sunbathing. So you could walk, run, fish, do all that kind of stuff, surf and that kind of thing. But uh, now they're opening up for sunbathing as long as you kept your distance. And so sort of parking areas as well have been opened up. So that's from Florida. Um, I don't know what we're going to expect when we get back to Beacon Marine in Gloucester, but um, our plan is to move slowly from here and to be home by the first or second week of June. We're not rushing. So any updates, I'll uh, be glad to hear it. And Feel free to contact me, you know, personally, either on the website, call, or text, or whatever. Awesome. Thank and you, Rafa. Well, just and, feel uh, free to write as well. Yeah, Thanks, what, what, we'll definitely keep you in the loop. You know, hopefully you're you're getting our newsletter, um, but um, yeah. a lot of the updates are in that newsletter. And as we put the um, going, you know, reopening the business guidance together, um, you know, we will share that with all of our members. So we'll keep you informed. Right. Safe travels back. Thank you. Okay. I wonder, um, Rusty, I see you're on from Rockport. You want to give us an update as to what you've been up to? Rusty can, and I'm from, my wife and I are um, have our business, Rusty and Ingrid Creative Company. We make um, screen printed wall art. Um, we have two retail locations, one in Rockport on Bearskin Neck, and the other one is in downtown Salem. Um, and we'd also sell online. So obviously our two sh retail stores, our, our galleries are shut down um, and have been. Um, and we have, have to, you know, had a couple of employees that we had to furlough for a little bit. But um, so things have been kind of uh, very difficult, you know, in, in, in that way. We had to move our whole business into our home in Rockport. So um, we brought a lot of our packing and shipping materials and things like that. Um, the one, uh, the bright spot that we have seen is that um, since the shutdown, we've done a lot of work on our website, um, web presence, um, and uh, we rebuilt our website, we released some new product, we've been promoting on social media, and um, the online sales have been really, really great. Like people, um, our, our customers have, have really, um, been responding. We've been doing some um, Mother's Day promotions, and those have been um, people have been responding to those. So, um, so that has really kept us, you know, going in this in this time. Um, but and we're hearing we're hearing that um, from other maker businesses that we know in the Boston area um, is that the online sales are um, are a bright point. Um, so. Um, so that's maybe one thing I could share is, is that um, if you have a web presence or if you're able to um, sell online or, or um, promote on social media, um, uh, customers are really responding to it. Um, some of the things that we do and have been doing for years um, online is, is really to emphasize gift giving. Um, so we do free shipping um, we have, and we've done that for years. Uh, we do free gift wrapping, we do free gift messaging, um, and now at this time when um, any type of um, um, celebrations like are on hold, you know, whether it's a wedding gift or whether it's a birthday gift or whether it's Mother's Day or Father's Day, um, people are, you know, going to shop online and, um, and to have a more personal touch, they are looking out for local businesses. Um, and so if you're able to offer that with your, your products, um, then, then that's a, there, there's definitely potential there. Um, so just as an example, our, you know, this time of year, April sales are generally online really poor. Um, but our sales this year are equal to our November sales from last year, which is our high season. And we've heard that same um, response from other you know, artist businesses that, that are um, very fluent online, um, that their sales are equal to their holiday sales online. 
Now that doesn't make up for two retail locations that are shuttered, um, but it's something. Um, so that's, that's our bright spot right now. That's where all our energy is going, um, is, is just trying to promote online and, and, and respond that way. So, um, so that's what I, that's what we're up to is just, you know, we have <laughs> without our employees now, um, and we're having to, you know, do all of the packing and shipping and, and um, producing the inventory and all responding with customers. So we've just been out straight doing that, my wife and I, you know, from our house, but it's, it's, it's carrying us through. So. That's it. That's a great story. Thank you, Rusty. The, uh, sure. I'll share something similar just quickly. The, one of the, the things that I've taken up here is, is biking just to get out and get a little bit of exercise and Seaside Cycle in Manchester, they are up 50% this year over last year because of everything um, that uh, is being sold through their website and pick up at the store. And so they're actually doing very, very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But there are not a lot of bright spots like that. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad you're using online to the extent that you can. Yeah. So one other thing is that um, we, I just um, been in conversation with um, Michelle Brown and we're trying to put together a, um, a, a, a discussion about online um, retailing and websites and just just um, to share our experience um, you know what products we use and maybe show a little bit of the back end of our website and things like that so that's something that we have in the works Michelle's going to be um, awesome. um, promoting that or, or communicating that through the Rockport um, through her her channel so um that's going to happen hopefully in the next week um but if so if there are businesses out there that you know would just like to are just curious about what how we do it and how we've known other art businesses that do it um, we've been selling um our website's been we've been selling online since 2013 so we have a, a little bit of experience in that so that's awesome thank you rusty yeah. And I, I saw Michelle, you you were on, and I'm not sure if you're still on, but if you'd like to give an update, um, there you are. <laughs> you want to you want to give an update as to what's going on uh, with you and Rockport, Michelle? So it keeps freezing. So I was trying to shut down some other some I know other the windows. Feeling. I have the same challenge. Yeah, and I was in the middle of, of sending you a message. I don't know if it actually went through. My son has been a very big supporter of Seaside Cycle. I, I think oh, this awesome. is actually the uh, first great. week that he hasn't um, harassed them over there. Yeah, great um, so, um, so in Rockport, um, I don't know where to where to start. Very thankful people are starting to um, get the different help, get the different support. That's that's helping to to ease things a bit. Um, talking about planning and looking ahead. Um, you know, as Rusty said, uh, we are looking to this week to to get back into um, more people have said that they want more, they don't want more meetings. They want more meetings with specific agendas, with things that they can, that they can do during this time to, to keep things moving forward. So, you know, as always, Rusty has so many great things that he can offer that he's willing to offer to people. So um, we're going to, we're hoping to do that on Wednesday uh, this week. Um, I just have a call out to Maria to see if she'd be available Wednesday. I'd like for her to be able to be involved in that meeting because um, she has some great things that, that she can communicate and share with our businesses. Um, and then the following week, uh, this morning, so in, in Rockport, uh, thankfully, we have this wonderful tool called Basecamp, which is a project management tool, and I'm very fond of it. And that means I get to share a lot of things um, with everyone. Uh, there was a wonderful video that was shared with me that talked about the importance of in this COVID time for us to rethink what tourism is. And it's, and it's not so much about the number and the, and the qua quantity of visitors, but yet the quality. Who is your target market? Why, do you, why are you targeting them? How can you attract them? Um, so during this time where it's not it's not in anyone's best interest for us to try to attract, you know, 10,000 people in a day to any of our towns. How do we instead focus on the right 2,000 people to get into town? So very similar to even, you know, when Rusty and I and the whole group that 
you know, did Makers Festival last year. Rusty was, in the past two years, Rusty and Ingrid were very intentional with, with targeting a particular audience to come for that event. Um, um, we have some people that have come forward to kind of talk about some revenue, um, revenue management and adjustments of how can we adjust what we're doing um, to offer more to the small groups um, and, and that type of thing. I'm seeing screens freeze, so I'm not sure if that's me freezing. Um, uh, okay. we, you're, I got everything you said. You, I lost you for a few seconds, but you're good. Okay. Um, so, so I'm really excited. I'm very thankful for all the partnerships and teamwork. Um, you know, I'm very thankful, even though Peter is, you know, on furloughed right now, Peter still will answer my calls and, and is still so willing to be a part of, of everything that we're doing. Um, so just thankful for everyone. It's Friday, the sun is shining, you know, it's a good day. Enjoy it while you can before the snow comes. The snow is not coming. You're just going oh, to, it's not, it's not. We just, today is the day that we focus on and the sun is shining. Right. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you for your, your terrific partnership and everything that you're doing in Rockport. It's really great to work with you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. I'm going to open it up. Who else would like to share? Laura Dow. Can I, uh, Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> Laura Dow from the Vista Motel. Um, we uh, <clears throat> are awaiting opening. We received our PPP loan and brought uh, our winter crew back to work. Uh, in the next couple of weeks or so, I'll bring back housekeepers to start getting rooms ready. And we're, we're you know, creating a safe place for them to work and trying to figure out, you know, procedures and how to continue forward once we can open without it doesn't feel like we have too much guidance yet from uh, the Commonwealth as to how to do that and what exactly we have to do, but that's ongoing. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention, uh, the other day in uh, the round table that the CBB had, <clears throat> um, the Crystal, who owns the Bearskin Neck uh, Motor Inn, uh, mentioned that they had filed a claim for um, business interruption uh, on their insurance. And I just wanted to put that out there, too, because I'm thinking of doing the same thing and was just wondering if anybody else had thought of that, considered it, talked about it. Um, and I don't know if anybody saw there was an article in The Globe the other day about Legal Seafoods doing their insurer uh, for this reason, the business interruption due to the pan pandemic. So that's something I'm looking into. Um, another thing um, that I was going to send a note to uh, Ann Margaret, because she's on the advisory board for reopening the state, about um, things opening in phases, and I'm hearing that hotels might be in the third phase, and asking them to consider uh, motels being considered differently from hotels because of the fact, you know, there are no common hallways and common uh, ducts for heating and cooling and, and all of that. So we're more able to keep people separate and distance. Um, so um, I thought I would shoot an email to her today asking about that. And lastly, um, with the PPP loan, I know everybody has the same questions I do. You know, this eight week window is kind of tough to bring people back when you're not open. Um, so my accountant and I have created a spreadsheet, so I'm trying to figure out, you know, where I'm at and how to spend the money wisely so that we can apply for forgiveness at the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. But one of the things I was thinking of doing, um, hearkening back to the, the um, WPA, Works Progress Administration, murals and whatnot uh, of the 30s, and we're kind of in the same situation now and maybe bringing some artists on to payroll to do a mural. I have some open walls around here that would be perfect for artwork. So I thought I'd throw that out to the group to see what you thought of it. And um, if anybody else would consider it, um, I think it might be a fabulous way to get some, some artwork up on the walls of Gloucester and a way to put people to work uh, if you can't quite get everybody back on payroll. And I'm told as long as they were on payroll, because uh, I, I ran this by my accountant several times because I wanted to be sure. And I, I ran it by Meredith Fine as well. And uh, as long as they're on payroll, it's, uh, it's something we can consider. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you. 
Michelle, do you have something to say? Oh, yes, 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 I do. Okay, so Laura, I'm not sure if you're available. Oh, and I think I froze again. Okay, we, got, oh. we can hear you. Okay, so Laura, if you're available this afternoon, it's actually the round table for the artists with mm -hmm. the North of Boston CVB, mm -hmm. and it's about the arts. Um, they, so the Mass Cultural Council in our meeting just the other day was just talking about that similar concept and thought and um, both Keiko from Mott and Mass Cultural Council people will be on that call this afternoon and that would be a wonderful, wonderful place to do that because I believe Mass Cultural Council also has some money that would be able to support that type of initiative. They are talking about money for murals. It, Gloucester, to my understanding, would qualify. And so that could be a great place. If you cannot make it this afternoon, let me know and I can connect you with the Mass Cultural Council people. Awesome, thank you both. Thank awesome. you, Laura. Who else would like to share? Going once. Ken? Yeah. Yeah, okay. David Bergeron here, Beauport Hearing Care. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you for the thank you for the meeting. Yeah. Uh, just a quick update on Beauport Hearing Care and Magnolia. Uh, we have stayed open uh, throughout the uh, the shutdown, providing emergency hearing aid services via curbside access. So we've been going out, picking up the hearing aids, bringing them in. It's working pretty well, uh, and uh, we've had a, not a lot of people, but a steady flow of people that have appreciated that. Now that we're talking about reopening the, uh, the economy, we're looking forward to having people come into the clinic again uh, on a limited basis with upgraded sanitation and social distancing procedures. We are beginning to accept uh, new appointments for testing later this month and we'll up, so. So we're ramping back up. We're looking forward to ramping back up slowly as we move forward. But in the meantime, we will continue curbside services and we will retain those curbside services after things reopen as part of what we do. So not everyone will always come into the clinic, but some people that need to, they will come into the clinic. So uh, that's the uh, update for Oakwood Hearing Care. Thank you very much, David. And our best to uh, Judy as well, please. And uh, David Verdon, yeah, you were gonna wanna say something? Yes, Ken, thank you very much. Uh, if I may, just I would like to briefly introduce myself and my business. Uh, my name is David Verdon. I uh, am the owner of Verdon Benefits LLC. Live in Essex, have an office in Danvers that I would love to go back to someday. And uh, you, you may have seen me go like this, and I'm trying to quiet down kids around me. I know we're all dealing with folks uh, uh, or things like that at home. But briefly, I work with businesses of all sizes, um, including businesses in Gloucester, Manchester, Essex, to provide benefits like short-term disability and hospital indemnity, for example, which are very, very relevant to the situation where we are in right now and for which I get That's a lot of phone calls. There. Sorry? I could hear him. Am I not being heard? No, I, I can hear you. Lynn, you're not on mute. Uh, I'm not on mute. Uh, I'll, I'll wrap it up quickly. So the, the, the benefits that I can offer, they work in companies of all sizes and types, can be offered to employees at no cost to the business owner. And one of the things I'd like to highlight right now that telemedicine is something that I can provide at no cost at all to employer or employee right now. Uh, so important. Uh, so really, um, the... Uh, and the last thing I'll say is given in these times, remote educations via Zoom and otherwise and enrollments are all possible. We don't have to go to anybody to do this and we can get them their income and their lifestyle protected with benefits. So thank you very much. David, thank you. Thank you for all you're doing. Who else? Scott, we haven't heard from you in a little while. Do you want to tell us what's going on at Aberdeen or not today? Very dangerous, very dangerous to open up the mic for me. You know that. I was waiting for you to call on me. I wasn't about to start unless you called on me. You go. Hi, everyone. Uh, Ken, thank you very much for these meetings. I will echo exactly what Tony Sapienza said at the outset. Uh, these meetings are great. I really appreciate being able to listen and hear what's going on. 
Um, Aberdeen remains very busy. Uh, we are this close to starting to take on some COVID positive patients, uh, some clients that really want our care and we want to provide it, but we have not had the essential uh, PPE that we have needed to protect our caregivers and the clients. The only piece of equipment we're waiting for now, and I anticipate it will be in any day, are the face shields. So we have masks, complete body suits. Um, our, our caregivers will be covered head to toe, and our clinical team will be making sure they are properly attired and know everything to do to manage those patients. So um, we're that close to taking those, those folks on. Uh, aside from that, so that's what's happening with Aberdeen. Um, business has been booming for us. And I know that might be a little frustrating for other businesses to hear that are suffering right now, but uh, it's, it's a double-edged sword for us. It's a frightening time, but it's also, um, we're, we're pleased to be able to be offering our services to so many people. Um, I just wanna go around since I see so many uh, business owners here and representatives from different businesses that, um, First of all, Captain Raffi, I want to come back as you in my next lifetime because uh, what <laughs> sounds really fun and interesting. And I'm sure you probably think I'm crazy for saying that, but, uh, and, and it looks like you're on your vessel right now. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. Awesome. Good for you. That's really cool. Um, Bonnie Scatterday, my daughter uh, who lives in Weston, her husband, their twin little boys and her mother-in-law came up to Woodman's a couple of weeks ago because they had to get out of the house and got some takeout um, from you folks there at Woodman's. And so thank you for being there and being open for that. Uh, Sal Stefano, great update from you this morning. And thanks about that information about Gloucester Bio. Um, I will likely be in touch with them uh, to be getting some hand sanitizer as soon as that becomes available from them. So, Scott, um, Scott, I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah, please contact me and I could, I could give you the CEO's contact info. Beautiful. That's great. That's great. Um, so uh, that's it for me for Aberdeen Home Care. Thank you, uh, David. It was great to hear from you. Um, David at Beauport Hearing um, is a member of the Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce Health and Wellness Committee. They continue to do a great job on behalf of their clients, uh, their clientele there. So great to see everybody. Thanks for giving me the chance to give an update from our side uh, to Ken and everybody stay healthy, stay well. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Yeah, thanks very much. And thank you for all the work you guys are doing on Aberdeen. You know, your folks are on the front lines and uh, we just can't thank you much, so much, you know, for all of that work. I froze here, but I'm going to reset. Hey, Bonnie, um, can you hear me? And I put you on the spot and I saw you're doing some promotion at uh, Woodman's for uh, Mother's Day. You want to uh, tell us what's happening with that? Um... Woodman's is very busy. People seem to love the curbside drop-off. I like Ken and Essex, so I fade in and out, so you may lose me. <laughs> um, we, for Mother's Day, are opening up the retail shop and the ice cream shop to sell just lobster rolls because that seems to be the big seller right now, and people, so they don't have to wait an hour to get their food, um, can just go up and get lobster rolls. Uh, just like a number of people, Woodman's got the PPP loan. And um, actually my husband's driving school got one as well. So that's been really great. Um, the hard part is figuring out how to use it just so that you get the forgiving loan instead of the loan loan, but we'll work on that. Um, Woodman's uh, as usual, the catering and the weddings and all that stuff has gone by the wayside at this point. We've got people September, October that are trying to reschedule now because people are panicking about the group sizes. Um, and just a side note, if you live in Rockport, beware, there is a string of car thefts. People are breaking into cars. Um, my house had three cars broken into last night. So wow. just be aware and lock your doors and just be you know, vigilant. And if you have cameras, turn them on, that type of thing. Wow. So, um, yeah. That's surprising. I think people are a little desperate, maybe. Yeah, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Bonnie, you... thank you for that update, and thank you for all uh, that Woodman's is doing. It's great. Thanks. Ken, can I add one more thing? Yeah. Rusty, um, I need for you to know that um, I have one of your Nantucket prints 
Um, and yeah, I'm so awesome. grateful for it. It's a special place for my wife and I. Not that everywhere on Cape Ann isn't also, but um, really appreciate uh, the work you do, uh, the kind of artwork that you produce. Um, it's one of our favorite things to have in our home. So thank you. Can I say one more thing, Ken? Yeah, go ahead. Um, like Rusty, our uh, shipping has gone through the roof. We are busier than we are at Christmas time. Good. Clam kits, seafood kits, it's amazing. All, people are stuck in the house and they want something different to eat, so it's good for us. Terrific. Thrilled yeah. to hear that. Thank you. I think we only haven't heard from Kimberly and Lisa. If you would like to share, please do so. Otherwise, we're going to... We're going to call it a session. You guys want to say something? Um, ahead, What's going um, on at 1623? Well, we're still making um, a lot of videos for community updates on things that are happening. And, um, you know, this week we've um, had an update, <clears throat> excuse me, from the North Shore Health Project, um, the Gloucester Health Department um, for mental health, um, people who might have have problems with, you know, um, dealing with this. There's a hotline. Uh, James Pope, the IT director, Ian Kerr, Wales, little happy story there. Um, Seaport Veterinary, uh, Erica Brown with the Manchester Essex Update. Um, and you're you're going to be interviewed later today. And, yep, I am, Lisa. Uh, I look forward to it. Thank you for that and the great work that you guys are doing. It's so important. You're, you're such a connector of the community right now, and it's really appreciated. Thank you, thanks. You too, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Back at you. Kimberly, you wanna tell us what's happening with you? Oh, I will just pop in for a second. So I have been spending my time trying to get a grip on the tourism industry. We have four vacation rentals and have more and more cancellations, more than I expected. I was super optimistic for July and August, and the folks coming from Canada seem to be very afraid. I've heard from our older clients saying that the elderly are asked to stay at home and for an uh, undefined amount of time. And others are have told me that the border would not be opening at the end of May, but I have thus since heard from Mott that that was not true. But anyways, um, people are just not comfortable to travel from as far afield. Um, and, and it's unfortunate because some of them were, have friends and family in Gloucester, so they've been coming for the last 30 years. So to have them not come is um, very strange. And so I have been sitting in on um, the North Shore CVB calls, which as Laura pointed out, there's always a really good nugget that comes out of somebody. Mm -hmm. And I, that has been phenomenal. I've um, been working also with Tony and Michelle to see how we couldn't create a place for the tourism industry to connect um, after these kind of calls and to somehow find a way to have a virtual um, discussion about how we all open up. And I hate, I know we used to say, we're not going to say open up for the season, but this year more than ever, it seems like a real um, opening. And just looking how, I mean, at least for us, how we can encourage our folks to come back in the fall or to come back um, or to rebook for the spring where typically we would just say, see you next year in the summer. And now we have to really change that conversation and see if we can't encourage people to want to come here for the beauty of what we have in the fall, winter, and spring as well. So that, that's it from my side for now. Excellent. Thanks very much, Kimberly. Appreciate all that you're doing. And can I just uh, say a word? Um, I want to take my lead from Scott and I've been talking, I mean, just listening to Laura, I always get something you know, valuable out of what Laura shares from what she's doing at the Vista. Um, and Michelle and Kimberly and Bonnie, you know, all of whom have been part of the Tourism Council. Um, so just again, thank you to you guys for sharing these insights. Um, and, and one kind of personal uh, experience from the Blue Shutters, we've had a lot of conversations with people 
um, in the past week. Uh, and this has been a topic of conversation among the accommodations is how we're handling cancellations and refunds and things like that. It's a big challenge because we don't have money coming in and, we're, there's, and, and guests are asking for money to go out. But you know what, the convert, when we do have conversations with these guests, first off, they're doing it very reluctantly. Nobody, nobody doesn't want to come. I mean, they're all, they're all anxious to come back. Um, but they're very understanding for, for the most part. Um, ask, you know, suggesting that we hold on to their refunds, uh, the, the deposits until a later date, um, rescheduling into the fall. Um, and for those who are really hard up, you know, we're able to sort of accommodate them. But generally people, uh, you know, they want to come back and that's encouraging to me. Um, just hoping that, you know, the pieces fall into place so that it could happen that happen soon. But um, just encouraged by the conversations that we have had with guests who are just yearning to come back to Cape Ann. So that's encouraging to me. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Man. I'd like to do a wrap up with Maria, but before we do that, I wonder, Lori, do you want to share anything from uh, Tux or do I pass? Hold on. Nothing different than what I shared last week. We're doing some mail orders. We're open for pickup when people call and I'm sorry I got interrupted um, with calls and a check in with our factory. Um, they are making some more candy. So some of the stuff we've been out of will, we will have. Um, that's about all. Thank you, Lori. Maria, welcome. All again. Can you, Thanks, Ken, for, oh, can you hear me now? Is that better? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, great to see you all again. Thank you, um, Ken, for always including the state on, in these conversations. And if you hear anything in the background, I'm sorry, the boys are doing a scavenger hunt with blessedly somebody's mom put together today so that because we don't have school on Fridays. So um, how come Sal isn't out there? How come Sal isn't out there? Because <laughs> you know he's on this call with you. <laughs> I know, I see him. <laughs> um so um uh, one thing i do want to mention is um mass growth capital corporation is doing um is offering um translation services so if anybody on this call if english is not your first language and um or if you know of any of your fellow merchants where english you know they struggle with english the all esba um Can't hear you. Can you guys hear Maria? No. Maria, we lost your audio. Oh, may have lost your connection. We have over 50 languages available, people to help in over 50 languages. Um, so, so please keep that in mind. Um, and also speaking of mass growth capital, I just want to plug them today is um, besides that translation stuff, they have a, um, a stable of technical assistance providers um, that can help with lots of different business, lots of different counseling needs. They have, so the way it works is they have a, a nonprofit that they have already issued a grant to. So if you need some specific assistance and specific um, counseling, um, you know, you might be a restaurant that is thinking about you know, I want to, you know, I, I applied for the loan, but I struggled because I couldn't get my financials in order as soon as I needed them to do, etc. That's going to be different than someone else. So restaurant financials. So she has someone that has either been in the restaurant business or, or understands it and can help in that way. So it's really targeted. Um, Ken has all my contact information. I mean, I'm happy to put my, I will put my um, email address in the chat. Um, but, you know, have a conversation with Ken, reach out to him and say, you know, what are some of the things that Maria can offer, the state can offer, and we can chat together, however you want to do it. Um, we're available to you. And then the last plug is that a lot of, so things are being updated. The, the essential list is being updated. Uh, I'm also going to put in the link on the, in the chat to the um, state. It, um, it takes you to the state site. And it tells you all of the, so for example, the stuff about the um, golf courses and the florists, that's all been updated and it's on all on the site. So thank you so much, Ken, for giving me this time to speak. Great to Maria, see you all. Maria, thank you and for all your work. And for those of you 
who may not know Maria. Maria, can you just say what your title is, please? If it's not Sure, cool. I'm so sorry. I'm the, um, well, first and foremost, I'm a Rockport resident. So yay, K fan. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also the Northeast Regional Director for the Massachusetts Office of Business Development. Um, primarily what we're tasked with is we, um, we administer the state's tax incentive program. I do that for the Northeastern part of the state um, in over 50 communities. Um, but also I um, serve as... Mm, lost me again, Maria. Mm. We're gonna have to repeat this. <laughs> we lost you on, uh, on that last bit, Maria. Maria, can you hear me? We lost you on that last bit. You also serve on. Oh, I also can. I also can serve as a connector for you for other state agencies. Um, so if you were looking for training or looking to with assistance for hiring or um, are a woman-owned business or a veteran-owned business and want to be certified in the state of Massachusetts. I can help you with different, um, with making those connections directly so that you're not going through um, five or six different channels. I will connect you directly with the person that runs that program. Super. Thank you very much for that. Sure. Thank you. I think we've been around the robin here. Is there, uh, is there anybody else who would like to say anything? I don't think yes. we heard from Lauren Caputo. I see Lauren down there. Okay, I don't, I don't, oh, I see maybe not video. I don't know, Lauren, if you want to say anything. Hi, I'm really just here listening. I, nothing's really changed on my end. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Waiting for the sure. guidelines and, you know, trying to get information. So we're what? still, we're still opening the office for two hours a day, you know, for, voicemails and emails and um, being in contact with people, but um, for the most part, skeleton crew and trying to um, just see what's happening. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who may not know Lauren, it's Cape Van Motor in. What, what is your, do you have a latest um, opening date, Lauren? No, I'm just pretty much waiting to hear. I mean, we're planning on May 18th, but you know, I wishful thinking so mm -hmm. yeah and i and again for all of you accommodations owners um again elizabeth carey is going to be leading the accommodations um reopening um guidance as part of the gloucester reopening task force so um please reach out to her if you don't hear from her first you probably have and um and just make sure you stay connected with her and, and to the task force because the guidance will come out of that Yes, okay. thank you for this call. Thank you, Lauren. If there's nothing else, I think we're gonna call it a meeting, uh, well served, and and I thank you for getting together and spending the last hour with us, and I'm wishing you all a terrific weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks very much, guys. <laughs>